Hey there creepy peeps. Welcome back to another creepy book club. Today we are going to be talking about our May pick burnt offerings. <laughs> All right, so like I just said, this is part of our creepy book club. I know I feel like I talked about it way too much and you guys probably just don't care, but I do have a creepy book club <laughs> on Goodreads. It's linked in the description if you wanna check it out. We read one book per month, always horror, thriller, sci-fi themed. You can see our June pick, which I'll talk about at the end of the video. And we also just decided all of our books for the last half of 2019, so July through December. So you can go check us out and see what we're gonna be reading for the rest of the year. Maybe if you need some convincing to join us. Um, we're reading some awesome stuff the end of this year. Like it's gonna, I'm so excited. <laughs> Anyways though, let's talk about Burnt Offerings by Robert Marasco. Like I have been doing, I'm just gonna read the summary from the back because I'm not good at summarizing books for some reason. Ben and Mary and Rolf are desperate to escape a stifling summer in their cramped and noisy Queens apartment. So when they get the chance to rent a mansion in upstate New York for the entire season for only $900, it's an offer that's too good to refuse. There's only one catch. Behind a strange and intricately carved door in a distant wing of the house lives elderly Mrs. Allardyce, and the Rolfs will be responsible for preparing her meals. But Mrs. Allardyce never seems to emerge from her room, and it soon becomes clear that something weird and terrifying is happening in the house. As the suspense builds towards a revelation of what really lies behind, behind that locked door, the Rolfs will discover that their cheap vacation rental comes at a terrible cost. So this is a rare occasion where I have read the book after seeing the movie. I I think I reviewed the movie, the 1976 film for um, 31 Days of Horrorween this past October. So I'll link that review somewhere up here if you wanna check it out. I thought the movie was okay. I, I, I like the movie. I haven't watched it since then though, um, which I might give it a rewatch now that I've uh, finished the book. But yeah, I normally don't read the book after I've seen the movie because a book is normally a bigger time commitment too big of a time commitment when you already know what's gonna happen. Um, <laughs> unless I hear that the book is like vastly different and in which case I'll make an exception. But yeah, I mean, it was a really quick read though. Um, for anyone that cares, it comes in at like just over 200 pages and I finished it in two sittings. So for as much detail that is given in these quick 200 pages, it reads very fast, um, not in a bad way. Like, so you can finish it really quick and I was kind of excited to get more insight into what was going on and get in the character's head a bit more because that's something you really can't do with film unless you want to have voiceover narration the entire time which you know most films don't unfortunately that kind of didn't happen I feel like for like I said how much detail is given it's all about the house pretty much and even given the fact that this is like from Ben, Marion's mostly and Ben's point of view, you really don't, there's really not that much more information given than what you can get from the movie, to be honest. So I guess in that sense, the adaptation is actually really good. I'm kind of disappointed that I didn't really get that much more information than I got from the movie. The only part I mean, I was really looking forward to this part was the ending. And I'll, I'll go ahead and not spoil. If you haven't seen the movie or read the book, definitely check it out. The ending is definitely shocking. No matter what you do, read the book or watch the film. I feel like the ending was explained a bit better in the book, obviously, because you have more time to do so. At least in that sense, I wasn't disappointed, but the rest of the book, like, you really don't get any new information than what you get in the movie, so. But I do see how this book apparently influenced a lot of haunted house horror, not just books, but movies as well. So I was gifted by one of my lovely subscribers. I was gifted paperbacks from hell by Grady Hendrix. I've talked about uh, one of his books, My Best Friend's Exorcism on this channel before. I'll link it up here. Great, great new horror author, seriously. Um, and we're gonna read another one of his books later this year for Creepy Book Club, I'm just saying. In that book, he talks about how Marasco was like the first author to bring finances into the equation. So haunted house predecessors like Shirley Jackson's The Haunting of Hill House and Richard Matheson's Hell House focus more on like 
the psychic experiment aspect where burnt offerings had the what is now definitely a haunted house movie trope where you have like the cash strapped family who get a deal on a house and it turns out you know like it seems like too good to be true and it turns out it definitely is too good to be true and it's like the worst mistake of their lives sound familiar yes it sounds like every haunted house movie ever and it and it uh, apparently you know helped influence popular novels like Stephen King's The Shining where it has a similar premise so as a whole I thought it was okay I think the most I got out of it was like the appreciation for haunted house <laughs> movies um, which is great like that it influenced that so much I wanted a little more from the characters like I feel like a whole lot of the horror is how they've how they psychologically change from the amount of time they stay in this house and it's like the the like how that's implied is definitely creepy and unsettling but i kind of wanted a bit more i suppose if that makes sense but like i said it's a super quick read though so regardless like i'm not i don't feel like i wasted my time reading it if that makes sense. I'm gonna give it a 3 out of 5. Um, on Goodreads it has a 3.8 out of 5. On Barnes & Noble it has a solid 4 out of 5. And on Amazon it has a 4.2 out of 5. So don't <laughs> don't listen to me. Everybody else really loves this book so um, definitely check it out if you haven't already. Um, and our book for this month June is Dan Simmons Summer of Night. Really excited to be reading that one. I really wanted to read The Terror as well so I'll see how this one goes and if I like Summer of Night I'm definitely gonna start reading The Terror. So if you want to join the Creepy Book Club feel free to join us over on Goodreads. Um, you, Like I said you can see what we're gonna be reading for the rest of the year. Yeah I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new here, become a creepy peep today. I post videos Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You can ring that notification bell down there to be notified every time I post a video, even though it doesn't always work. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, stay strange. Bye! This video is brought to you by all these lovely creepy patron peeps that you see listed on the left hand side of the screen. If you want to find out the perks to being a creepy patron peep, you can follow that link that is in the description of this video. Um, no pressure, but it's there if you want to check it out. Thanks for watching. Bye!